Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial where I want to sort of look back on one of my older videos uh, which is this one here about the outline effects and the colour picker as you can see here I made this about seven years ago so I would assume it was for version one of Affinity Photo but the video is still relevant for version two pretty much everything is exactly as I it was in version one now the reason why I want to sort of call back on this video is that I've just had a comment in this last couple of days by Blueback21 and they said they notice that when they do the outline effect the outline corners are rounded, they're not square. And I must admit I truly had not noticed this until this was pointed out to me. So I thought I would sort of have a look at that you know, to see whether there's a way around it and if not you know we'll sort of we'll see what happens and but also recently in some comments in facebook groups there have been a couple of people asking about doing key lines and but i will come to that after i've had a look at the outlines so if we go into affinity photo now i've got this picture here which i took recently at my wife's choir's Christmas concert and if I put an outline on this I'm going to use the FX now just to quickly recap what part of that older video was about if you come to quick effects and you have outline if I highlight hang on let me have a layer actually selected um, highlight the options for outline you get the color for color opacity and radius now these are the very basic controls there is or there are more controls for this option and like other options there's a little cog here and you can click on that to open the layer effects and as you can see you've got those first three options which are the same as what's in here but you also now have alignment fill style and color so there is another way to get to this let me turn that off select the layer and the fx icon down here will automatically open that bigger panel rather than having the sort of more basic options of the quick effects so just click on the fx icon and you will get the to my mind the better options so put a ticket outline click on the word outline and let me just raise the radius of that outline oh, hang on by default it's normally set on a outside and this was what the, you know the, the, that person who made a comment about this was talking about let me get this out of the way bring this down as you can see the corners are rounded although it's on a square image the corners around it and there's no sort of way on here to alter that but if you change this to inside that will now give you that square corner that you might be looking for and you, know, you can increase the or decrease the size as you want let me just zoom out again on this now the only problem with doing it on the inside is obviously you're sort of starting to eat away into the image so if you do make a selection or pick a picture and you want these square corners on your outline then you will need to just allow for losing a little bit of that picture or whatever it is that you've put an outline to because the inside option will sort of nibble away at your image and um, like you don't have to settle for just black you know you could have it a different color or whatever you want so that is basically answering the initial question about getting a square corner on the outline a key line now again this is my wife's concert um, 
which I took a picture at. And uh, there are a couple of ways of getting key lines. Now, the key line is just basically the sort of line around the outside of the image to sort of highlight it. Now, if I remember correctly in the Facebook group where somebody was asking about this, they didn't want to alter the size of the document. Um, but I am going to look at that option. Um, but that is initially what they wanted. So I'm going to try and sort of show you three different ways of getting a key line and how you uh, do that, which option you prefer, I will leave up to you. So the first one is going to be making the document bigger, which is what this person didn't want. But this is what I'm going to do first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer and I want it to go below my background layer. So I'm going to click on this button up here, which is insert behind the selection. So I click on that and then add a new layer and it will put it below what was the background layer. So now I'm going to increase the document size. And in this case, it's, well, it's more the canvas size rather than the document size. And we're going to do this, we'll do this in millimeters. I understand that a bit better. So this option here is 914. So pretty much 915 millimeters. And I'm going to make it 925, I think. And because this sort of chain lock is connected here, you can click on it to unconnect it. Um, but because it's connected, when you alter this, the other side will automatically change to suit. So let me just click on this and make this 925 resize. Now let me just zoom out slightly. So you can see that document size is now bigger. But the photograph size hasn't changed. So all I need to do now is center this on the new size document. So if I come up to alignment up here, make sure we're on the move tool, which would help alignment. And I will center it horizontally, center it vertically. So, oh, try that again, sorry. And click apply. And what I need to do now is to fill this background layer with color. So I'll get the flood fill tool make sure the empty pixel layer is selected and select black click on there and then you get your black key line obviously it doesn't have to be black i mean i could pick you know, blue for example and then flood fill that with blue so whatever the background layer is and whatever color you make it will be your key line so that is that version. Another way of doing it is again I will make sure I've got the move tool selected this time. Uh, not alignment, it's insert behind, add a new layer. Now this time I'm not going to change the canvas size, I'm going to change the image size. So with the move tool selected I'm going to hold down the control key, I think it's command on the Mac come to the top corner and then just drag in this image slightly and because I held down the control key it will sort of stay centered and in proportion and then much like before just get the flood fill tool make sure the empty pixel layer is selected and then you have your key line that way so you sort of either uh, need to increase the document size or decrease the image size on the current document size that you have. Now the last way that you could do this, we come to this one here, which is a, a sort of a test thing that I was doing where I've got the other image in, as an insert. So if I s select the background layer here and I then add the effects 
outline. Now, obviously, I can't sort of go outside the document size because there's no document there to draw the line on. But again, if we have this set to inside, I can just raise this up and, until I start to get that key line showing up. And you can just change the color to whichever color you want. So, and then I could do the same with this, but um, just have this on the inside again. Make sure I've got outline selected inside and do that, change the color. And if I want to sample color from this image, I can use the color picker tool. And let's say we pick this brickwork up here and then that brickwork color will go in this little circle. Just click on that and that will be the color that is selected. So let me just close that. So they've got like three different ways to get a key line, either by increasing the document size and having a layer, colored layer below it, or keeping the document si uh, size, but decreasing the image with a cutter layer behind it or using the FX outline option and using the inside option within that FX. So hopefully that will answer both sets of questions in one video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.